Thank you so much, Pastor. And also, good evening and praise the Lord, each and everyone present here. Good evening and praise the Lord. And we can be more merrier about the fact that we are here in the presence of the Lord and not in some... At least I'm, I'm blessed to be here because my home doesn't have an AC. So it's cool and it's relaxed and it's very good in the presence of God rather than being in my home. So I'm really blessed to share this place, share this time with all the wonderful people who have decided to give your time. To give your time not in somebody else, not in some work or with somebody, but in the presence of God once more, praising Him, thanking God for all the blessings that He has done for this entire week. We can see that we had this entire week to ourselves and we did many a things. We did, uh, I did many things, maybe you did many adventurous things, uh, maybe you can share sometime, but the thing is that we had this whole week to us and we did so many things. And I believe that God has been there with us in each and everything and through each and every step and through each and every hurdles or problems or whatever we face, every storms, every floods, each and everything, our God is mighty enough and is trustworthy that He was with us through everything. And I want to thank God for all the blessings and everything that He has done in our lives. We see that in our life, we, our lives is made up of something called decisions. We make decisions in our life. Maybe you decided that you don't want to be anywhere else rather than in the presence of God this evening. And that is a decision well made. I would say that's a decision well made. And that's, so these decisions are what are we are made of. Our personality, our daily life, the person we are, are the results of the are the results of the decisions that we make. I heard I heard this once. I read it somewhere, and then I spoke it some. I think so in the early morning devotion I was speaking. I also mentioned this. In any situation, in any circumstances, if we have anything with us in front of us, the first thing that we can do is said to be the right thing. In any situation, in any circumstances, the first thing and the rightful thing to do is the right thing. The second thing that we can do is the wrong thing. And the third thing that we can do is nothing. The first thing that we can do is the right thing. The second thing is the wrong thing. And the third is nothing. We see that this decision of doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing or doing nothing at all causes us who we are today. An army official who dares to march forward into enemy territory just to save his comrades, his people, is termed as a prey because of his decision to go and barge it. But the army official who runs away, who doesn't want to go into enemy territory, rather than whose life has been threatened or whose what hostages they have, that is called, that person is called to be a coward. So we see that our life decisions, the decisions that we make, however small they are, or to however big they are, maybe what we ate this morning, or this, this afternoon, our lunch, our breakfast, our small decisions, what we wore today, to our church today. So these are small decisions that we made that come these very small decisions take out to very big, big decisions in our life. People who we can trust or this or something that we can call our own, something like a business or a shop or maybe some people that we trust upon or some things that we trust upon and we do some things or some things that we just blindfoldly go forward. We see that we are met with decisions each and every step in our life. And it's up to us of what decision do we take. We know we should always, always opt for the right decision, right? We should always go for the good decision. But we are not perfect and we make mistakes. And that is where something called the wrong decision or the bad decision come into our lives. 
The sea, if we read the if we read the word of God, if we read the Bible, we see so many people and we learn from their lives how their good and bad decisions affected their lives. It's just a third third person view because we are standing outside and everything is happening there. So we are just watching how things unfold in people's life. But to our own life, like your life and my life, we are first person watchers. Like what we do, we cannot see what will happen. So the saying is there, there's a saying called, decisions are in our hand, but the consequences are not. Decisions are in our hand, but the consequences are not. And this afternoon, I would like to share a small message, a brief message on the topic, and it's on, this, once on the screen. It says, the wrong decisions and its consequences. If we ought to look for good, we also should be wary and should be learned about the bad. If we, if we know the light, we also know the darkness. If we know white, we know black. Because we, type, we kind of explain the both simultaneously. And this evening, I would like to share, I would like everyone to go to a book called The Ruth. A book called The Ruth, named after a female character, a woman from some other faith, from a different place. But the Bible respects and gives the, book, gives the name of the book to a woman. Who may be not worthy, but becomes worthy because of the decisions she took in her life. But this evening we'll be focusing on the family, whose the head of the family is named Elimelech, a man named Elimelech, along with his wife named Naomi, and their two sons named Mahler and Killian. And we see that later on they marry to two, two different women, one named Orpa and the other named Ruth. We see this is a small nuclear family and struggles that they go. If we read the first five verses of the book, Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, let's read it together. We'll have it on the screen, let's read it together. Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. It says that, let's read together. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in a country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Mahalon and Kilian. They were Ephraimites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other named Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Mahalo and Killian also died and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. We see this is a very common passage, a very common story, a very common life struggle that we have heard many a times. But today morning, I would like to take you to what decisions they made. Especially the head of the family we are talking about, that is Elimelech. We see that remember this quote, remember this thing, our tomorrow are the results of the decisions. We make today. Our tomorrow is the are the results of the decisions we make today. Decisions of our life. If we come back to the passage, we see that we meet a person named Elimelech, and how he made decisions for his family and how they ended up. Because we already read the passage, we know how the story unfolds. But let's go back and start where Elimelech started. We see that Elimelech was a Hebrew. He was a Hebrew living in Bethlehem.
the name Judah. He was so privileged to be a part of the people that God called his people, his own people. Can you just think about that? God calling, oh, this is my people, and him being a part, his family being a part of this people. And we can assume, based on the festivals that we have, the festival Israelite faith, and all the stories that go up, that from a very small age, he had been listening to what God has been doing in the land of Israel, in the people of Israel. We see when the, when the river parted and the people along with Moses walked past, or when the army came to fight Moses and his people, and Moses raised his two hands in praise to God, and God gave them victory. These are small stories sent in by their ancestors, told by their ancestors to be moved forward so that they never forget, the people of Israel never forget what God has been doing in their, in their lives and how they should be graceful, thankful and submissive to submit their lives to God. But we see that here Elmelech screwed up. He screwed up. He took a decision for his family and through which we are going to learn three things. We are going to learn three key things from Elimelech's decisions. What decision making it does. Let's go to the first point, the first learning that we have, that we see in this book. We see Elimelech made decisions based on human understanding rather than God's guidance. And because of this, the first thing that happened in his life was he separated himself. We separate ourselves, if we talk about ourselves, we separate ourselves from the blessing and promises of God. When we make decisions based on human understanding instead of God's guidance, we separate ourselves from the blessings and promises of God. To understand how this unfolds and how all this happened in their lives, let's go to the, some interesting facts that we see in this. The most interesting thing that I found in these passages was the name the people had. We see that one name that we get, the head of the family, Elimelech. We know there is another name, Naomi. And we see there are places named Bethlehem, Judah, Moab, and we see many other names, right? We, you and me have a name. This place has a name. And the places we know all have a name. And every name has a meaning attached to it. I would like to ask how many people sitting here know the meaning of their life, of their names? How many people? Just raise your hand. If you know the meaning of your name. If you know the meaning of your name. Okay, many people don't. Some, some don't. Some the, Yes. But I would like to tell you that every name has a meaning. And if you if you like to know, there is we have an amazing tool called Google. It's not 100% accurate every time, but it does the job. And uh, I know some people in the church, they didn't know the, name of, uh, the meaning of the name. So we Googled it and we searched for their name and today they know their name, the meaning of their names. We see that Every name has a meaning. If we go back to the passage, we see Elimelech. Elimelech, the name means my God is king. My God is king. How many people would love to have that name, right? We, we put it there. But his name only says my God is king. If we refrain it, it could also mean that God is my king. Elimelech is saying, is proclaiming that my God is my king. But we see that the decisions that he made in his life for his people, the decisions that, we, that he made for his people, for his family, were not what his king told him, were not what his king ordered or commanded them. We see that the first and foremost thing that the children of Israel were told and commanded by God to do was that 
to stay in the promised land, to fearfully, to pr fearfully praise God, back Him and stay behind Him, go behind Him and to do all that God says. We see that Elimelech decided to leave the promised land, leave Bethlehem, leave Judah, leave the place that God has given them and go to a place that was unknown to them, that was not good according to biblical standards, according to God's opinions. And we see that this changed his life. This one decision changed his life. And he separated himself from the promises of God. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Judah means praise. We see that there's a situation going on during his time in Bethlehem and Judah. We see that there's a famine that happened in that era, in that time. And that forced him or that brought a thought in his mind that I have to leave Bethlehem. I have to leave Judah for my family, for myself and go and live somewhere else where I can depend on myself, where I can depend on my intelligence, my strength, my everything and move forward, forgetting altogether who is his king, who is his God. We see that Moab, if we read Psalms, Psalm chapter 108, verses 9. Psalm chapter 108, verses 9. It says something like, Psalm chapter 108, exactly demonstrate what God wants to say, what Moab is. If we read the only the first line, you see, Moab is my wash basin. God is proclaiming that Moab is God's wash basin wash basin. You may say what what is the what wash basin? What's what is what is does what is means? We all have basins in our home, right? Where we wash our hands, we wash our faces, we wash vegetables somewhere sometime, we wash dishes, we have basins. It's because we have taps in our home. But in the olden days they didn't have tap. So they had to store water in a utensil, in a basin, and people when they came from outside to, to their home, they used to wash their feet. That was the tradition. They used to wash their face in their hand. And you see that this basin, consciously we won't keep it with everything clean. We would keep it apart, far away. Because what? It's dirty. Because people are using it to wash their feet, their hands, their faces, it's dirt. It's, it's, it's basically kept aside. So God is proclaiming Moab as his wash basin. We see that and if we wrap up everything, we see Elibale left the house of bread, the house of bread, the house of praise to live in what God calls his wash basin. A place called Moab. I believe that if he had stayed in Bethlehem during the famine, I believe our God is mighty enough to provide for the family. And that is my faith of God. Many times we forget who God is. Many times we forget what God has done for us. When they were going through the wilderness and they had no food, God provided them the heavenly food. Then how can a person, how can you and me forget what God has done in our life and go forward, move forward in our own understanding, in our own thinking and believe that we would succeed in our lives. We, would do, we can do anything without God in our lives. How can this thought be in us? We see that this decision that Elimelech took in our life, that is, I want to go away from the promised land. I want to go away from God. I don't want I don't want God's guidance, but my human understanding is enough. He separated himself from the blessings and promises of God. That brings me to the second point, the second learning that we can do from this portion. When we separate 
answer from the blessing and promises of God, we have to forget God altogether and move in our own understanding. We face tragic consequences. We face tragic consequences in our life. It is very evident if we, if we read if we read Ruth chapter 1 verses 3 Ruth chapter 1 verse 3 we see Elimelech face a consequence in his life. It says, let's read together. Now Elimelech, now his husband died and she was left with her two sons. Elimelech made a decision in his life. And he faced the consequence. And the consequence in this case was death. I believe if Elimelech knew that he would die when he, if after this decision, he would have never taken the decision. If we know that if today I go this place and God forbid, but if I die, I believe that most of us, none of us would like to go to that place, right? And we see that that is the problem with humankind. We don't know the consequences that will happen in regard to our decisions. As I said, decisions is in our hand, but the consequences are not. We see that Elimelech took a decision in his life and the consequences were grave enough for him, literal grave enough for him. There's a saying, I heard it somewhere, and it's written, it's written like this. The will of God is always what you would choose if you knew all the consequences ahead of time. If I repeat, the will of God is always what you would choose if you knew all consequences ahead of time. Every time we listen, we hear this thing, God's plan are perfect. His God's plans are best because He knows everything. His plans are best for your and my life. And we should move in that plan. And as the saying it perfectly summarizes what I want to say is that we don't know our lives. We don't know what consequences our decisions would face. And that will lead us to trust in the Lord. To trust in God because He is all knowing, He is almighty, He is all powerful, and He is our God and He loves us so much that He sent His own Son to die for us. That is His love for us and the best plan that He has for us. To understand this dynamic between our decisions and consequences, let's take some example of a food. For example, omelette. Omelette. Everybody has had omelette in their lives, right? To make an omelette, what we do? We put eggs, eggs, maybe two eggs. I put two eggs. Then I put some tomato, some onions, some salt. Anything else I'm missing? Chilies, yeah? Chilies. Anything else? Coriander leaves. Coriander leaves, okay. And, and anybody else put in some, something else? Oil. 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 oil is a good one. So we see that we put all this together. Maybe not in the omelette. We put it on the pan, right? Yes. yes. But maybe in the omelette, when, when we make the batter, we see that if we start mixing, putting all this and start mixing, and we decide, no, I don't want to have omelette. I'm done. I'm done. Omelette is all done. I don't want omelette. So can I put the eggs back? No. Can I put the tomato back? No. Can I put the onion back? No. Can I put the salt? No, because it's all done, already done and dusted. That is the example of some decisions in our lives. Some decisions that we make in our lives are head and fast. We cannot move forward. We cannot go back. And so we only have to move forward. And I believe those are the decisions we should be wary enough. We should be thoughtful of because good or bad, they affect our lives. If you read a very common verse in the Bible, most of us have heard of this. If you read Romans chapter 6 verse 23, 
Romans chapter 6 verse 23. It says, anybody wants to read? Victor, please read it out. Stand up and read. Louder, Louder. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. If you focus on the first part, we see we use it many times, we use it in evangelism, talking to people. It's very great, but the wages of sin is death. Sin will lead to death. There is, for each and every sin done, there is need to be some amount, something, in, something we need to pay. And what we need to pay, that is, someday it will end up in death. Some, some days prior, we went through, last week, we went through Good Friday, Easter, uh, Resurrection Sunday. We, and we heard how Jesus Christ died for you and me on the cross of Calvary. And he poured our sins. He gave up all this blood to purify our sins so that we can come close to God. We can come near him and be with him. But we need to remember that sin leads to death. Each and everything in our life is, can come to a death. Maybe not instantly, but maybe eventually. But things in our life can die. Maybe it is an opportunity, maybe our work life, maybe our personal life, maybe things around us start to die because of sin that we carry. But we see that each and every decision we make, if we make it on human understanding and leave on God, ultimately we face tragic consequences. And that leads me to the third learning that we do from this passage. Our decisions not only affect you and me, our decisions affect the people around us. The people, maybe they are our loved ones, maybe our family, maybe our friends, maybe our relatives, our colleagues, our, our work partners, maybe many other things, the people we surround ourselves with, our neighbors maybe, our decisions also affect them. If you read the Word of God, we see, if you read Ruth chapter 1 verses 3 to 5, Ruth chapter 1 verses 3 to 5, we see how Elimelech's decision, how Elimelech's decision in his life for his family affected his family and the people too. Verses 3 says, Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orba and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Mahalo and Kilian also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. We see Elimelech's one decision not only changed his life but his entire family. We see both of his sons died leaving the mother, leaving their wives alone and we can understand that a family where all the male have, all the men have died I believe that family would not be happy at all. But we should understand that our decisions also affect other people around us. If you read the, the Bible, if you read the Word of God, we see, we see many examples, many people who have taken decisions in their life, the wrong decisions in their life, how people are being affected. We know David sin. David greatly sinned once. But David sin, and that affected a woman named Bathsheba, his hus her husband, and also an innocent child. I'll not try to elaborate on what I said. But we know David sin affected Bathsheba, her husband, and an innocent child. We know that the sin of the ten spies, you remember the spies sent into the promised land to check 
that how the promised land was, what is exactly how God had said, we see that the ten spies, because of what they said and how it affected the people, the entire nation of Israel went through a phase in the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness. We see there's a person called Adam. His sin affects and continues to affect every human being and all of creation. Because of these people, people around them were drastically changed. We know I was sharing in the morning service that we, we know in India something called an incident happened called 2611. 2611, the decisions of some people change the entire face and mood and feelings of the entire nation of India. Many were directly affected, many were indirectly affected. But we see each and every person was affected. Decisions affect other people's life too. So we should always remember that we should make our decisions not based on our understanding but on God's guidance. If you ask me how, how will I know what is God's will? How will I know what God wants for me? How will I know what decision I want to take? I'll say, I'll tell you that the decision you made today, the decision you made today to be in the presence of God this evening and not anywhere else, that is a good decision indeed. The decision you made to follow Christ, to follow Jesus, is the best decision. We see but we should not falsely understand that if we take bad choices, then only bad things will happen to us. If we take good choices, no bad can happen to us. It doesn't work like that. So the Bible says that the righteous will fall seven times and get back up and move. But the wicked will fall once and it's done. It's done for him. It's through this we can understand that we will face bad situations, we will face problems in our life and we should not always address them to the bad decision but we should think not always they are the result of bad decisions. If many times if a person tries to be truthful, society hampers hammers on that person. We see in movies and all that when a section, a section of the society is corrupt and one person decides to be honest and truthful, the society tries to throw them out, tries to suppress and make the person like themselves. It's very hard to be on the good path. So we should never forget if you're this, this evening, if you're going through, if you're saying, I, I'm following Christ, I'm following Jesus, that is a good decision I made in my life, then why am I going through so many problems, so many issues in my life? Why so much turmoil in my life? I would like to tell you, fear not, because God is with you. You are not alone. And every time you fall, you will get back up and move forward because God is with you. This evening, I would like to tell you, and by this I would like to wrap it up, that take your decision based on God's plan, on God's guidance, not on human understanding, not on what we understand, not on what we think, not on what the people around us think, but what God's guidance, what God wants us to do. Many times we don't want, right? We don't want. We know Jonah. We know Jonah. He didn't want to go where God wanted him to go. He took a different path. But we see it ultimately ended up good for him. But in our case, we should always remember that we should follow God and his 
clients are the best in our lives and we should believe and have faith in him. And this evening I would like to encourage each and every one of you. If you're going through some problems, if you're going through some actions in your life because of some decisions that you have made, rather than I'm not judging it, be rather it be bad or good. But this evening are you facing, if you're facing some things in your life because of the decisions that you've made, I believe, say God, I trust you. Make the good decision this evening and say God, I trust you. My trust is in you. I have faith in you and I want you to be in our life, to be in my life. And this evening I will, I, I will request each and every one, please let's stand up in our places. Let's stand up in our places and let's say, God, God, I want you in our life. I want you in our life, God. Maybe in our life, we have been many situations, many decisions, God, where you wanted us to take a path, but we heard you. We listened to what you say and took the opposite, took the wrong, took the other path. But this evening, I would like to tell you, God, God, I want you in my life. God, I want you in my life. God, I want you in my life. It's only you, God. God, nothing else. I want mean, to thank you, God, because you have given us your word, the scripture to guide us. You have given us your servant to guide us. You speak to us and you guide us, God. And I want to thank, and we want to thank for each and every opportunity that you have given us to come closer, to know your will, to know what you want for us, to know what is your understanding, to know what you want in our lives. And this evening, God, I want to tell you and I want to encourage each and every one of you. God is with you and believe and keep him in the first preference in your life. May God bless each and every one.